We get into the music as part of our worship. We are going to have a scripture reading, and I'm going to take five minutes. Where's Elaine? Five minutes. Okay, I promise. Five minutes just to exposit a little bit of, uh, of this text. And so uh, if you have your Bibles, we're going to have it up on the screen, but if you have your Bibles, open with me to Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. This is the biblical account of uh, Joseph's visit uh, by God uh, through the, the words of an angel. And uh, he gives Joseph confidence to take Mary as his wife and to eventually raise the Son of God as his own. And uh, our scripture can also be found on the inside of your bulletins if you don't have a Bible and you don't want to follow along with the, the screen. It's there for you as well. But looking at Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25, let me read this passage of scripture first. And the Word of God says this, Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. And she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus." For he will save his people from their sins. All of this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. Okay, so I promised I would be brief, and so... Buckle up, uh, because we're going to go quickly. There's three things that I want to take out of this passage, three things that Joseph faithfully remembered as he was faced with this choice, as he was faced with this difficult choice, three things that he remembered about the God that he served. Number one, Joseph faithfully remembered God's love. Verse 19 tells us, if you go back and look at that, that after he discovered Mary was pregnant, her husband Joseph, being a just man, and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. This really is, as you look at the life of Joseph, we don't know a lot. This really is the only passage that we have in the entire Bible, in all of the Gospels, or in any in the other part of the Old or New Testament, that we have any description of Joseph's character, of who he is, of why it might be that, that the Lord chose not only Mary, but chose this man to be the parents of the Christ. We have other passages that show us Joseph's faith. We know that he and Mary presented Jesus at the temple as they were supposed to in Luke chapter 2 after his birth. We know that the whole family went to Jerusalem for the Passover. We know that later in Luke chapter 2. We have a statement here about his character that he is a just man. And because of that justice, he resolved to divorce Mary quietly for her assumed infidelity. What made this just... Uh, it's not just that he is uh, following the letter of the law, that he is following the law of Moses if, uh, if an engaged person is found to be unfaithful. But it was also the love that Joseph had, not just for Mary, but for humanity, for those who were made in the image of God, just like he was and just like you and I are. And I'll stipulate to you that this was the way that Joseph lived his entire life, not just in the, the decision that he has to make here, not just in the uh, the command of God or the, the way in which he deals with, with other people who may be sinning against him, but this is, this is how he lives his entire life and why he was trusted to raise Jesus, why he was trusted to raise love incarnate, which is who Christ was. He modeled faithfulness by the love that he had for other people. And so that's the first thing. Second thing is this, Joseph faithfully remembered God's faithfulness to him and to us, and to all of humanity. We display faith and faithfulness to God because he is our creator. He is God. He is majestic. He is sovereign. He is powerful, and there's nothing that we can do about it, and so we show faithfulness to him. And also because he is deserving of our faithfulness, because of his great love and mercy and grace. However, God, if you look at this passage... God is also faithful to us. He does not fail ever to fulfill his promises that he makes to us. Even though we are far below him in worth and value and importance, 
not even measurable in the, the distance that there is between us and God, even though we are undeserving of grace, he remains faithful to us. The angel on God's behalf gives Joseph a command here in verses 20 to 21. And then Matthew gives us, the reader, a reminder that Joseph would not need. He would not need to remember the the goodness or the kindness of God. He would not need this extra instruction because he already knew it. He tells us in verse 22 and 23 that all this took place to fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah 7, 14. And I pray that we are not consumed with our desire to be faithful to God, that we forget God's faithfulness to us, that we are not consumed with with our desire to, to do the right thing, to try and earn our place into heaven, that we forget that it was God who who performed the work. It was God in his faithfulness who who did what we couldn't do, no matter how good we are, no matter how strong we are, how smart we are. That it was his faithfulness to us that we have any opportunity whatsoever to be included in his family. The name Jesus itself that the angel tells Joseph to name the boy, that is the Greek form of the Hebrew name Joshua. It's the same name which means God is salvation or Yahweh is salvation. And so in the same way that in the Old Testament, the, the, the first helper, the assistant of Moses, Joshua, his parents named him God is salvation to display their faith. Joseph and Mary are instructed here to name their child Yeshua or Jesus in the Greek to show God's faithfulness that he is the one who saves, not us. The name that the Christ child would hold is a living example of God's faithfulness to us and God's salvation for us. Last thing that Joseph faithfully remembered. Last thing. Here we go. Joseph faithfully remembered our responsibility to be obedient to God. Look how Joseph responded to the messenger in verses 24 and 25. When Joseph woke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife but knew her not until she had given birth to a son. And he called his name Jesus. God is salvation. There are a lot of responses that we have to the instructions of God. There are a lot of times that we take the Bible, take the word of God, we open it up, we read something, or we have a question about morality. We have a question about what is is right or what is wrong to do in in life, what is right or what is wrong to do in this situation. And we open up the word of God for some guidance, and we, we get that guidance, and we think to ourselves, I'm not doing that. You know, that is, that is not a part of my culture. That is not a part of, of what I'm about. That is not a part of what, something that would be accepted in this time. And so we look at the instruction of God, we look at the word of God, and we say no. And Joseph had the same decision to make. He had a word from God that explained what was happening. He had a word of God that explained how to, how to respond. And I don't think we give Joseph enough credit for making the right decision in this particular situation. His faith in God pushed him into the direction of obedience when he could have continued with his own plan. He would have continued with a a course of action that would not have brought him shame, but would have brought Mary shame. He could have continued with a course of action that would have allowed him to continue living a a normal life, that he could check off the the boxes of all the plans that he had, all the, the goals that he had set, but he didn't. He surrendered all of that, and he followed the direction of God. And we might say, well, if we had a message from an angel, if we had a a message, a a literal audible voice from God, then we would have no trouble obeying. But this just isn't true. Jesus told us in Luke chapter 16 of a rich man and a man named Lazarus. This story goes that Lazarus was faithful and the rich man was not. The rich man lived his life in extravagance and and all of the, the pleasures that he could possibly have. And Lazarus was poor and a beggar and his health was not great. And you go through the story and you realize that both men die. And Lazarus goes to be with Father Abraham in heaven. And the rich man uh, goes to uh, what is described as Hades, eternal separation from God. And the man is pleading with the Lord, trying to, to help him. And the Lord says, you have made your decision. And he says, well, then send me back. Send me back so that I can warn my brothers. Send me back so that I can tell the people that I love of, of the torment that is waiting for them, of the the price of disobedience, of the price of earthly extravagance. Send me back so that I can warn them. 
And Jesus responds in verse 31 of chapter 16 of Luke. He said to him, if they do not hear Moses and they do not hear the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead and tell them. And so we have the instruction of God today. We have the Bible. We have his holy word. And if we will not follow that now, then we would not follow that even if the dead returned to tell us. We would not follow that even if an angel came to warn us. And so Joseph is not given enough credit for his response in this particular situation, not because of the angel, but because of the faith that we had, that he had and the faith that we are to have today. And so we're going to worship the Lord today, and we're not going to worship him just through music, uh, because we'll, we are going to enjoy some great music. We enjoy a, a great blessing from our musicians and from our singers and from the, the talented members of our congregation today. But we're going to worship God because of faithfulness, because that is what we do. If our worship this morning is greater than our worship any other Sunday, then it's not worship at all, because it's not about what goes on this, on this stage it's about your relationship with God. That's the measure of your worship. I want to encourage us all to remember the faith of Joseph, who faithfully followed the instructions of God, whether that was through the scriptures or through the words of an angel. And may we respond with the same type of obedience to the goodness and the grace of God in our life. And so pray with me, not just as a transition within our service. Pray with me as an act of 